Hey guys, Jit Fadlings here uh, for some quarantine edition anamorphic shooting. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to live stream using an anamorphic lens, or more importantly, how to join online meetings and conference calls using an external camera and an anamorphic lens. First of all, though, I hope you're staying safe in these COVID times. Uh, Vancouver has been doing a pretty good job so far. Uh, we have very, very few cases. We have, I don't know, in the last week, we had one day with 20-something cases, but a bunch of days zero. So we're doing pretty well, and I'm just working from home on a secret project just to be safe. But Brazil is not doing too hot because... Well, the president has a very bad attitude towards the information that's going out the country, but we're seeing like 30,000 new cases a day, which makes me worried about my family and my parents and everybody that's there that I know. And it's just a crappy situation. So let me know how are things on your end. I hope everything's okay and shoot a comment below so I can hear if you're doing all right or if you're having a hard time. So let's get into this. The first thing that inspired me is that we're all working from home and we're all on a bunch of Zoom meetings or Skype calls or whatever conference calls sort of software your work is using. And a couple of months ago, I was in a call with some of my favorite anamorphic shooters. That's like Ollie Kember, Max Swan, Matt Leaf, Lucas Foth. Uh, among a bunch of others and Lucas was showing off with streaming from his GH5 with a two times scope and a T-squeeze live view while the rest of us were using crappy webcams and we can all agree on that webcams suck they're like five steps behind your smartphone camera and what can you do about it right so Lucas was destroying all of us and I asked about his setup and he was using a capture card feeding through the HDMI. So I went to look after that and apparently I was too late because all the good capture cards sold out early in isolation. So this plan had to stay on hold for a little bit. So considering that the capture card plan failed, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to use your own external camera as a webcam for anamorphic streaming or conference calls and then we're going to add an anamorphic lens to the webcam on the computer and just simplify the setup and kind of kick it up a notch with the webcam crappy style. And the good thing is all major camera brands have started offering some sort of support to the current situation of the world. Like uh, Sony is what I'm using now and they have updated their software so you can tether from an external camera. Uh, Panasonic with the GH5 and a bunch of their higher tier video cameras also does it. Canon is offering support so I tried the 5D3 which worked and you can use many different cameras and lastly you can also always use your smartphone with a couple of apps which is something that I haven't tested out yet but it seems to be working pretty well for other people. The bad part is all of these requires you to install some sort of software on your computer or update your camera firmware or pay for some app and a lot of it is only compatible with Windows so that's kind of annoying. The good part is after you install everything as soon as you connect your camera things get straightforward and OBS Studio makes the whole process way more manageable. So if you don't know what OBS Studio is, you're in the same place as I was two or three weeks ago. I just did a little bit of research. It's a great software. It's what I'm using to record this video. And if you only want to stream, you can do it with just OBS and your anamorphic lens. But if you want to join conference calls, you're going to need a plugin called Virtual Cam. All the links for all of these tutorials and software and whatnot is in the description so you can check that there for more detailed information. I'm also including a tutorial on how to connect OBS and Zoom in case the one that I'm doing here is not clear enough for you. The guy does something with sound that I'm not doing 
but it didn't affect me. So anyway, and the whole point of using an anamorphic lens as your webcam is you can get all of this stretched out background. You can get some cool, fancy lens flares. Woohoo! And really just flaunt it that you are really a super high quality visual style person, even when you're working from home and everyone's got their crappy webcams. So you're like better than everybody else, but not really. Uh, <laughs> so if you're into any of this, I can sit, I, I, urge you to subscribe to this channel now because anamorphic shooting is all that this is about. So hit subscribe, hit the bell, get updates. I'm going to start live streaming now that I work this out and you're going to be able to ask me your questions and just clarify things that you might not be sure about anamorphic shooting. So far, so good. Uh, I connected a bunch of cameras to this computer. In this case, I'm using the Sony a7S II with the Siri lens and later on you're going to see me use the Panasonic GH5 with Lomo on another video. And the Sony remote app is open on my desktop as its own app and it's tethered into OBS Studio taking up the whole screen as you can see now. And you can see not only the UI, but also that I'm looking a bit squeezed. So let's get to that. This is the only way that I figured out how to do the de-squeeze properly. If you have any better ideas, please shoot them in the comments below. Otherwise, bear with me, it's gonna work. I'm shooting on the A7S full frame and the Siri only covers Super 35. So there's also some thing adding in the shot, which I'm gonna get rid of. And it's likely that'll happen if you have different anamorphic adapters onto taking lenses and you can get away with something adding for this because you can easily crop it out. So here's the process. You go into OBS and here I'm going to hold the alt key on the keyboard and go to these corners and gently crop out everything that shouldn't be in the picture. So all of the UI and all of the thing adding is going away. And this is the picture that I'm left with. Cool. I'm going to right click it and go into transform, edit transform. Get this size 1920 and multiply by the lens stretch factor. So 1.33. So I'm going to go into a calculator here. Well, I guess I already did it, but 1920 times 1.33, 2553.6. We go back into OBS and we 3.6. And there we go. I'm looking properly de stretched, de squeezed, de squeezed. But I'm not taking up the whole frame. So I'm going to try to rescale it. And when I do that, I pop back into the squeezed option, which is kind of annoying. So OBS is trying to keep pixel aspect ratio square and we don't really want that. So let's go again and right click transform, edit transform, and it rescaled to different values. We're going to change the bounding box type to scale to width of bounds, right? Yes. But I'm also going to resize this to the values that we had before. I didn't write them down, but I know them by heart. It's 2553.6 and 1000. So now I am de-squeezed. I'm just very big on the screen. Hello. So I'm going to drag this over. And with the bounding box style that we set now, we can easily rescale things so they fit properly on the screen. Here we go. I got a little bit of uh, black bars on the top and the bottom, which is cool. And a lot of out of focus, stretched out bokeh in the background. Sweet, so that seems to be working and you can even add some lens flares for more dramatic effects. You're like, yeah, I'm in an action film now, uh, kind of stuff. And <laughs> uh, good, good enough, right? Um, so if you're still here with me, just please go ahead and like this video, 
and we're going to go for the webcam section now. So I'm going to turn on a different light because it's going to be bad. So what if I don't want to go through the hassle of adding another camera and I just want to shoot with my webcam, but I want to be a little fancier about it. And um, what can I do? So what I did was I just pulled up the my Moondog Labs phone anamorphic and I held it up to the lens and it, it kind of works pretty well. Now the problem was how do I secure this thing onto my computer? That's where the challenge was. Depending on the mount of your anamorphic, mine is a bayonet, some others have filter threads like Ulanzi. You can get a clamp for it if you're in the US. The Siri clamp sells for 10 bucks, but the shipping alone is going to be two or three weeks. And I was going to pay more on the shipping than on the clamp itself. But I was fortunate to find one of these guys in my <laughs> Craigslist uh, listings. And it allows you to quickly adjust the height of whatever lens you're using. So this is the Moment M series clamp and it adjusts and you can tighten it. And it takes uh, devices of up to 10.75 millimeters in thickness or width. So now I'm gonna try to mount this on my computer and here we go, tighten it up. I think it kind of held up okay. And I add the lens to it. Uh, where is it? The lens is going to go here. A little bit skewed. And here we go. Yay, nice. Now that the lens is mounted to the computer and properly aligned, I think. Let's check some flares. Yeah. So my flares are aligned and the lens is aligned. I just have to de-squeeze it again. So we're going to go and right click, transform, edit transform. You know, I have a bunch of different numbers here. 1584 is the one that I'm going to take. So 1584 times 1.33, 2106.72. We're going to bring that in, 21. 2106.72. I'm looking proper. I already know that I messed up. I have to go back into the transform and set to scale to width to bounds. Yay! Looking good. Now all I have to do is set this to here, the corner, drag it over to the bottom corner, and here I am. This is my webcam, and I'm de-squeezed. Uh, <laughs> the image still looks nothing like the A7S did a few minutes ago, but it's fancier and more interesting than your regular webcam view. I mean, the flares are not being appealing. Maybe I need to dim this light down. But now I get way more noise. It's just something more interesting to do with your webcam. And if you're into just doing streaming, that's it, that's your setup, this is the end. OBS can start streaming straight from here and you're gonna see me do that in a little bit. But if you wanna use that on Zoom calls and other kinds of meetings, there's one more thing they have to do, which is to install OBS plugin, the virtual cam, where's that thing? Uh, virtual cam, this guy. So after you download and install this, you can go into tools, virtual cam, and turn on the OBS camera. And you hit start. So when you go into zoom and settings, video, am I going to crash? The integrated webcam is blocked off because OBS is using it, but if you go to OBS camera, here I am with a slight delay, but de-squeezed and ready for some uh, 
conference call action. <laughs> so just for the sake of good image quality, I'm going to go back to here by Zoom, by virtual cam. I'm going to switch back this guy and get out of this webcam. And well, if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you made it all the way to the end, don't forget to subscribe. Please like this video and let me know in the comments below if you're going to use this technique or if you're going to point someone to use this. Uh, I feel I have a lot of gear that I'm not using at home during quarantine and being able to plug it in and just use it on my conference calls is a good way to brush off the dust. So let me know your thoughts and I'll see you pretty soon starting live streaming. Catch me here on Wednesday at 11 a.m. PST. I'm Chitfa Heathers, and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.